Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I show you some new features of Aurora HDR 2017. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer from the beautiful, the incredible city of Paris, France. And I now make two tutorials per week, two videos at least. On Tuesday, I make a tutorial like this, and on Friday I do a live show or a tutorial. All right, this time I want to talk to you about Aurora HDR 2017 because I redid my entire HDR masterclass with a lot of projects using Aurora HDR 2017 as my main software for Mac users and using HDR FX Pro for Windows users because it's Mac only, although it's coming out for Windows in a few months. I'm going to show you and give you for free one of the first video projects that, so you can see the power of HDR Aurora 2017. HDR is something that is still very popular, creates a lot of impact on social media, so you should check it out. Here is my little presentation. The video you're about to see is one of the first lessons you're going to learn in my HDR Masterclass 2017. I originally retouched this photo in Photomatics and I'm redoing it in Aurora HDR 2017 because there are some new stuff that I couldn't do in Photomatics. So here is just an extract of the HDR Masterclass 2017. At the end of the tutorial, I'm going to show you all the other HDR projects so you have an idea of what this new course is all about. All right, so I'm back from my shoot. Uh, you know, in downtown Los Angeles, and that is the first photo we're going to try to do. This is the one I did just before, and uh, before doing this. So let's see how I did this. Using Aurora HDR 2017, the best HDR software out there. Uh, so here is my basic file. This is the overexposed photo. You see how in the overexposed photo, the cars are blurry, and then we have the underexposed photo here, and then we have the, um, we have the normal shot here. Okay, I'm going to take all three, I'm going to right click, export, and I'm going to click here on open original images for HDR 2017, Aurora HDR 2017. So it's going to launch the software. We have a first window where you have the uh, minus 2.7, well it's actually the underexposed normal overexposed to make it simple. I'm going to click on alignment. I'm going to click on additional settings and um, um, color denoise. I'm not sure I'm go it's on by default. I'm going to remove chromatic aberration because I know there is some in this shot and I'm not going to do the ghost reduction because ghost reduction I only use really when there is trees or people walking for cars. It's too extreme and I'm going to show you another really cool trick that's only possible with Aura HDR. Okay, so let's click on create HDR and see what's going to happen. I'm going to put this on pause until it loads. Okay, so here we are in Aurora 2017 HDR software and I really, really, really like it. I'm going to show you how it works. So first, uh, to start off really simple, we're going to work with presets. The first time you open the software, you will see that here, uh, if you click on preset and you click here, it says search Remily, but by default, it's probably going to say basic. Uh, basic preset and the way the work preset works is you, you just click on it like realistic and it's just going to process the photo with the basic settings. I'm going to be using my own preset because believe it or not they are built in the software. If you use ORI GR 2017 you will get there is a Trey Ratcliffe, Captain Kimo and Surge Remedy preset so I'm going to be using mine. And I'm going to click the second preset Photo Surge Bright to start off. So what Photo Surge Bright is is just usually the preset I start off uh, to uh, create my basic layer. Now, when you're on a basic layer, there is an important decision to be taken, and that is here. You see that button, which is called HDR look? This button is only available on the original image. You see here, we're going to have different layers, and this one is called original image. So if you go here to the left, you're going to make your image pretty soft, not completely... Um, HDR looking and if we go here to the right it's going to be the opposite it's going to be very HDR now I personally like and we will do some over-the-top HDR but most of this course is going to be on trying to do a natural HDR so I usually go a little bit to the left I try to you know give a lot of dynamic range what I want to do is get the dynamic range that's present see when you are witnessing a sunset like this one is uh, there is so much subtleties in the sky, you know, between the highlights and so much data, you know, and it's so red and it's so saturated. This is what I want to communicate with this photo. So on this one, I'm going to open up the shadows because, you know, on the basic layer, because it needs 
that maybe not that much but just a little bit and that's my good starting point that's all so all i did was open up the shadows and bring down a bit of hgr look now comes the power of hgr aurora you see all these cars which are blurry uh the first time i did this course i was using photomatics i had no choice to have all this blurry car now there is a new option in aurora 2017 which i love is you have the possibility you see to go to your hdr bracketing and i'm going to take the hdr normal exposure so i'm adding as a layer the normal exposure now in the normal exposure mesdames et messieurs the cars were not moving so now i'm going to take this brush you see by default the overall photo is completely visible okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a brush and when you start brushing you do just one brush stroke what happens is that well, first of all, the brush is at 50% of opacity, so it's gonna put, it's gonna create a mask. Everything is gonna become black, and black conceals, meaning that it's gonna hide this layer, except where you brush. So I do one brush work. I'm gonna put it the whole way to 100, and I'm gonna brush here. And all I'm trying to do is bring back the cars of the normal exposure. Now, the thing is too dark, right? It doesn't match the overall exposure. Well, check this out. If I boost the exposure and the and the shadows. In this shot, uh, all I did was, you see, instead of having the cars moving, I made them stop. And that's something that's really cool because you can now do digital blending at the same time of doing HDR. And that is really, really cool. Okay, for this image, I'm just going to click here. This time on adjustment layers. And what adjustment layers is you build with layers and using presets. For example, I'm going to click here on glowy nights. Now, glowy night is a preset that I did to make glowy uh, sunset clouds okay now i don't like how it looks on your world photo i can click here on photos for each clouds to see how this one looks on the photo not bad i prefer what photos for clouds does so i'm just going to take a brush i have the brush by default and i'm going to brush and remember by default the brush is at 50 percent so i'm bringing just uh the cloud effect which is very saturated just that now it's a little dark so again i can just open up a bit of shadows on this layer and I can even lower the exposure of the layer so all I did on this one check it out before after is bring a little bit of diffusing and saturation in clouds which is all I wanted and that's it so basically the idea of using preset is you create a new layer you choose a preset you look for something in the photo that you like and then you just brush that part so you will see me we did three layers for this photo i'm going to click on apply oh one more i'm going to show you one more cool adjustment layer again and this time i'm going to use and i always do that i love when you do hdr to do a contrast between very fuzzy and not fuzzy we have a little bug here i'm going to click here on photo surge local details okay now photo surge local details the preview got dark, that can happen. It's not, uh, uh, I'm using a beta version for this, uh, for this shoot. The local details created details everywhere. So again, I got my brush and I only want that on this building and on that building. So now I'm adding, look at this, I'm lighting details just here on this buildings and nothing else. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I think uh, maybe I'm gonna do one more adjustment layer and this time i'm i'm going to click here on the uh, one that i use a lot here it's called final touch i'm going to click on final touch here okay and uh, and this you can take a decision i'm going to boost the exposure of the photo on that final layer and you see the layer is kind of gray so it sort of blends with the rest um, and uh, i don't like to use that on the sky so i just want to use this in the middle so i'm gonna again i'm gonna brush and i'm just gonna bring a bit of light here just on the buildings okay and uh, so we have this layer which brings light on the buildings we have this layer okay which brings details and then we have so we've been building with layer original image we have the hdr frame see a lot of layers but you will see it might seem to be complicated but as we use it it's going to be easier and easier and if you think it's too much i think this layer is too much i can just lower the opacity 
Okay, once I'm happy, I click on apply and it's going to process the photo and re-import it into Lightroom. So let's hold on for that. So here is the photo back into Lightroom. And all I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to go to the lens correction. I'm going to click here on auto to make it straight. And then I'm going to go to the sharpening. Usually, let me zoom at 100%. I like to, uh, I have this formula, okay, uh, where usually if you bring your sharpening like 100, 100, what it's going to do, and not in this case, is bring some noise. So if it doesn't bring noise, I'm just going to put it at 100. But you see, you probably can't tell in the video, it brings a bit of noise here on the sky, so I'm going to mask it. I, I, you don't want to sharpen the sky, you want to sharpen the building. So if you hold on the Alt key on your keyboard and you move to the right, anything which is black is not going to get sharpened. That's good. And voila, noise reduction I don't need here. Chromatic aberration, I had a bit of, yeah, I still have a bit here and here, so I'm going to use that. Remove chromatic aberration. And voila. And here's the shot, the final shot of downtown Los Angeles with HDR Aurora 2017. All right, so let me show you what my new HDR masterclass is all about. We're going to start off with this project. And every project that I'm going to do, this is the before photo, that's the final photo. And you can see this also on the YouTube video. Uh, this one I, I put for free on YouTube. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do the same retouching in the HDR FX Pro. Every time that I do a project in OR HDR, I'm going to do it also for Windows user in the HDR FX Pro, which is a cool software. It's not as good as Aura. You will see the rendering are not always as good, but you can get some decent results. That's another project we're going to be doing, which was in my original HDR masterclass. But this time I'm redoing it with uh, Aurora HDR and so that's the final result and one of the cool things that I couldn't do before is really get uh, you know bring back into Aurora HDR the overexposed photo to bring in all the street lights the, st uh, the you know the lights this is another project that's the before photo and that's the after photo in Aurora HDR so it's a classic HDR shot and that is by the way the final result in HDR FX Pro it's a different result but still very interesting then we're going to jump over to the Antelope Canyon. That is the before photo, and that is the final photo in Aurora HDR. I'm trying to go for a natural look, but we get all the dynamic range. Then we're going to jump over to the Mont Saint-Michel. Now, this one is a bit more complex, because not only I show you how to first retouch the sky, then do the HDR, and then erase all the people. So that's the before, and wait for it, wait for it. That is the final result. Pretty cool, no? It's one of my favorite photos of the Mont Saint-Michel that I took years ago. And as usual, I'm going to give you all the source files so you can really follow along and do it for yourself. Next, we are going to go to Paris. And this is not Aurora HDR. This is not uh, HDR FX Pro. This is Photoshop and digital blending. We're going to take different exposures to get this result. So I'm going to use a lone exposure to get the streaks of light from the cars. I'm going to get the underexposure to get all the details of the sunset. I'm going to get the lone exposure for uh, all the water there and I do everything with layers in Photoshop. Then the next project is the Corsica Island, Lille Rousse. This is the before photo and that is the final result with Aurora HDR. Look how beautiful that is. Now, let me show you the final result that I got with HDR AFX Pro. That is, it's a little different. It's not as saturated. It, I don't like so much rendering in the clouds, but it's still a good HDR software. And as I said, every time we're going to retouch it, you will have one video for Aurora and one video for H HDR AFX Pro. I think except one or two projects at the end. This is the before photo of an HDR that I shot in Queenston, New Zealand. That's the final result in Aurora HDR. And this one, I'm going to teach you all about ghost reduction and the importance of ghost reduction when you shoot leaf and water and things like this. Um, next up, we have this photo. That's the before photo. And this is the final result. This is an old HDR photo that I did that I loved. And I reprocessed it in Aurora HDR. Every time a new software comes out, I, I go into my old RAW files and reprocess them to see how it co it can come out and this is the best version i ever got i love this photo and it was only possible through four or five layers in orgi you got to check out that video then we have uh, this photo from new york that is the before photo and that is the final photo uh pretty cool shot i like it the hdr really brought all the data that i wanted to get 
Then we come to this one, and this one we're going to do some special effect. I'm going to do a Hollywood look effect in ORGR. You have to know that I am a partner with ORGR, and I created a whole bunch of presets. One of them is called the Hollywood preset for Hollywood HDR type. And this video is all about how to get that style. Very popular on Instagram. Then we have this one, which was originally in my first HDR course, and I'm redoing it using ORHDR. And that's the final result. I love this little Irish bar down in Paris. Then we have this one. Now, this is the most complex project of all because not only we're going to do an HDR, but we're going to do a sky replacement using some of the HDR data. So it's a mix up between sky replacement and HDR data. I really love that photo. Okay, guys, so this is 13 different projects, three hours of video, 25 videos. Most of the projects are done with Aurora HDR for Mac and HDRFX Pro for Windows. This is the best HDR course I have ever done. I'm known for HDR. This is my third HDR course, and this one is the most complete. There is over 50 RAW files that you can buy for it. And I'm trying to get the course out at the lowest price possible with all this data. Please do not use the source file other than for learning experience, but you can get a special release price in the description of the video and not pay very much. And I'm pretty sure you will love it and it's going to take you HDR photos and your photos in general to the next level. Check it out, my HDR Masterclass 2017.